Okay, Smith. Pellegrini. I hear you threw down a challenge. And? It's on. Think you're up to? I know I am. We'll see. I just love do-it-yourself projects, especially when you can upcycle something that's, well, an ordinary household object, like a fruit jar. Now, just recently, my friend and modern pioneer, Georgia Pellegrini, challenged me to add my own twist to a DIY project from her latest book, which is called Modern Pioneering. Now, when I saw these painted mason jars, I thought, what can I do to spice this up a little? I think I have just what the pioneer ordered, a stylish mercury glass look. You see, in the mid-1800s in America, mercury glass was used as an affordable alternative to silver. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make our own mercury glass, an affordable version of this original hack. The materials you'll need to make this project are cleaned and dried mason jars, water, white vinegar, a spray bottle, a few paper towels, and some looking glass spray. To start, fill the spray bottle with one part water and one part vinegar in shape. Then set the nozzle of the spray bottle to its finest mist setting. Armed with the spray bottle in one hand and the looking glass spray in the other, gently spray a fine mist of the water vinegar mixture on the outside of the jar. You want to create small droplets of water that bead up and do not run. Follow up the water vinegar spray almost immediately with a gentle and even layer of the looking glass spray. Next, just allow this to dry for a minute and apply another fine mist of the water vinegar solution and then let them sit. Now allow this to dry for about two minutes, then gently blot the beads of water and vinegar solution with a paper towel. And don't rub very hard because the metal finish will streak, though you can apply gentle pressure in various areas to achieve a more realistic and varied mercury glass look. Then just repeat the same process over and over, rotating between resting your glass container on its base versus its top so you get full coverage. All in all, I usually spray on about three to four coats in total. Now, once you finish, you're gonna want your jars to, to rest and dry for about three hours before you begin to use them. Pretty convincing, huh? All right, now, a little decorating. What I'm gonna take is some inch and a half wide grow grain ribbon. Love this chartreuse color. And wrap it around the mouth of the jar, and then I'm gonna tie a bow on it like this. It's gonna be very simple, just a double knot like that. And then I'm gonna just trim these ribbons little tails, just cutting a notch in here. I just think the fabric adds a nice touch. And now it's just a matter of arranging these. Here I'm gonna use some of these iris that I cut out of the garden. I like grouping them together. You can see this makes a nice ensemble. In this larger quart jar, I have a peony called Coral Charm. In the medium size, when I've used some of these flag iris and then daisies, in this smaller pint-sized jar. A beautiful ensemble for any type of setting. So here's the deal. I just so happened to be in Arkansas for a book signing event. What a turnout. I love it here in Arkansas. It's where I learned to hunt and fish. When I told Alan I'd be in town, he invited me and some friends to come up and check out the farm. We're not supposed to be here for a few more hours, but I decided to come a little bit early and crash his pad a little gorilla gardener style to show him what I've got in store. Can't wait to show him what I've done. 
I love what Alan did with the challenge I gave him. Now he gave me a little challenge, which is to do my version of his watermelon vase. Now, mine's a little bit different. I'm more of a gorilla gardener, so I take a lot of things from the wild, plants, herbs, flowers, and this is gonna be a little bit of a different vase. I'm gonna use an avocado here. I'm gonna do a little slice at the base to give it a flat surface to stand on, just like a vase. Then we're gonna take a paring knife and we're gonna cut just around the top about one fourth down into the avocado. Then you have that flash, you see a little bit of that seed and we're gonna leave it. Now with an avocado, you don't wanna use plants that are gonna need a lot of water. You wanna use more woody herbs, things like rosemary, thyme, oregano, and that's gonna actually allow them to dry in a really pretty way. This is almost like you'd be making a flower arrangement with those green bases that soak up water and help the flowers stay in a nice position. It's kind of what you're doing with the avocado flash is serving as that stability. And we're just gonna put these in a little at a time. And you can kind of play with it. See what you have in your garden, see what you can find in the wild that's woody, that won't need a lot of water. Things that will look nice when they've dried after a little while. We're using some oregano here. Got some thyme. And of course you could add a little color in there, maybe some chive flowers. They won't last quite as long, but they'll sure look nice. There we go. Now we're gonna set that aside, and we're gonna try an orange. Now an orange, you really wanna find a thick skinned orange that makes it easy for you to get the pulp out from the inside. And we're gonna do something similar. We're just gonna use a paring knife, cut off that top piece, it aside and then we're gonna cut all around the inside to help pull out some of that flesh. Now the goal here and the reason we're taking out the flesh is because we're really gonna need to add water to this. This is really our a true vase whereas the avocado is more of a stabilizer for our flowers. Now you don't have to take all of it out. You need to make enough room to get some nice flowers in there. And it's simple. We're just gonna add a little bit of water and pick whatever flowers we can find. And then like I said, you don't have to have some beautiful garden like Alan does. You can go for a walk in your neighborhood, find dandelions, find black-eyed Susans, whatever you can find that looks pretty. Be a bit of a gorilla gardener, go wild and see what you can find and make a pretty arrangement out of. I've got here, which is black-eyed Susans, which we got from his garden. Cut them nice and short. Think about contrasting colors. I love putting orange and purple together. can add some of those chive flowers again. And this is just a really fun, playful arrangement for a summer garden party, for your kitchen table. It's not expensive, you don't need some fancy vase. You can still be whimsical and take advantage of what you have around you. Give this a try, I think you'll love it. Now, this one's gonna be beautiful on a dinner table. Now we're gonna do one more with a pepper. Georgia, you're already here. Uh-oh, you caught me. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> you came early. Well, I decided to do your challenge Good and come a little you. early. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm showing these guys how to do some a nice twist on the project that you have in your book. A little you, gorilla gardening. Uh, right. Uh-huh. The challenge. Mm-hmm. So I've got a little avocado, Cute. which is sort of our stabilizer with I some more like woody it. herbs. Never use an avocado. I think it'll dry pretty that way. Very nice. And this we have a nice orange going on here. <laughs> I love the colors. Black eyed Susans and, and then we're gonna just do a pepper real quick. Getting creative with produce. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You gotta use what you got, you know? Do you have enough flowers? I don't actually. In well, fact, I was hoping you could Help me find some good ones. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's, let's do take it. a little walk All right, around. Thank you. You know, Georgia, I've always been interested in making things with my hands, creating things. I call it the hand arts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of call it the same thing. Manual literacy is what I call I it. I like that manual yeah. literacy. It's just, I mean, it just brings out so much in terms of our own creativity to to put things together. There's something so satisfying about getting dirt under your fingernails and oh, yeah. doing those things that our grandmothers knew how to do that 
we should still know how to do, but don't always. <laughs> well, I know, it is satisfying. And I love to grow things too. Like mm -hmm. this hyssop, isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, this is gorgeous. It has that marvelous licorice aroma. Mmm, delicious. And it's gonna look pretty in those peppers and oranges. This is a great perennial. Color. Yeah, it will mm -hmm. look great in the arrangements. Mm, I love that flavor. It is really licorice -y, actually, mm -hmm. right. And it's a perennial, it comes back. So why not grow it? That's the best part. So Georgia, why do you think people are so interested in learning a little bit more about well, what our grandparents did? <laughs> I just think that, you know, we live such fast-paced lives these days. We're all on the internet, we're all surfing that virtual reality, and right. I think this and is sort of the antidote to that. You we're know? running around in a crazy sort Absolutely. of way. Absolutely. I mean, this sort of forces you to slow down and just be more connected, mm -hmm. more grounded, I think, right. to where we've come from. Yeah, connect with the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's something very wonderful about being that present and just using your hands. It's so simple, but so purely satisfying. It's therapeutic in so many ways. Yeah. It helps me center. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, me too. Which is good. You know, this is a really nice color, but there's a little deeper purple one down here, some, some verbena. Why don't we go get some yeah, of Yeah, I love that. All right. Grab up your bucket, and here we go. This is a verbena bonariensis. It's mm. a tall verbena, isn't it great? Beautiful, it's I love it. good for cutting. Is it? Perfect yep. for our little vases that we made. Yeah, you know, and just like coming out and picking your own flowers, and all these flowers we're picking, I mean, they're so easy to grow. Mm -hmm. And, and I always say to people, you know, if you don't have a, a great backyard, you can grow things in pots on your windowsill. You know, there are ways to get back to the land. Indeed, so, so much fun too, very yeah. satisfying. Absolutely. Aren't these beautiful? Love them. Little purple Little flowers. bursts of yeah. purple. Little, little bug there. You think these are going to work into a, the arrangements? Oh yeah, it's going to be perfect for our little table. Yeah, you just needed a few more, mm -hmm. so I think this will work. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Georgia, I'm so excited that you're here and you're going to share this recipe with us. I am. I thought I would bring a little bit of Texas to Arkansas. Mm, I love it. Our guests are going to go crazy mm -hmm. for it. The fun drink, spicy, tangy, a little savory in there. It's mm. called a jalapeno bacon michelada. Okay, it's going to work over every one of those taste buds. Mm -hmm, absolutely. A little <laughs> spice, a little tang. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. super... A little bacon. <laughs> absolutely. Bacon is the secret ingredient. <laughs> Bacon is the most important ingredient pretty much for anything in life, I would say. I would say so. <laughs> it improves the flavor of everything. Absolutely. All right. So you're going to help me here. I'd I need love you to. to rim the glasses with okay. some lime. All right. And then just put that in a dish of salt, kind of turn it around. Okay. We'll get While you do that, I'm going to put together a few dashes of soy sauce in here, a little Worcestershire, and then the most important thing is the spice. Mm-hmm. A little Tabasco going on, and you can add more or less depending on how spicy you like your drink. Right. 
The problem is, though, that the jalapeno infused vodka is already very spicy, so you kind of have to be a little careful. So I like the way you cook because it's like a little of this, a little of that, and we're really just sort of giving folks an idea. Yeah, you know, I'm not really good at obeying the, the rules, <laughs> the ingredients. My grandmother used to just throw things together in the kitchen. Mine it was too. Something like in her kitchen air that just made everything taste good. I think that's so. what made us rule breakers. Absolutely. It's because the way to be in life, right? Because you you can get comfortable <laughs> breaking them, and sometimes it works out even better. Absolutely. And I just think it's fun. You, you kind of cook like you're with your with your intuition. Yeah. yeah. So if I'm you like just, a little more lime, then exactly. a little more lime. Taste and change. So this is about a quarter cup of lime juice. Okay. I'm going to get things nice and tangy with the lime juice. So lime and Worcestershire together with a little Tabasco. Already mm -hmm, this is a very mm -hmm. unique blend of ingredients. And then this is kind of fun. I'm doing a little bit of cracked pepper in there. I like that. That's I gonna... love that in my Bloody Mary, so I'm mm -hmm. loving this. I can tell. Yeah, that's a nice texture and spice. And then we have our jalapeno infused vodka. We just let that sit overnight. That's the great thing about vodkas, is that you can give them, well, just about any kind of flavor you want. Mm -hmm. And you've done jalapeno here, mm -hmm. fresh out of the garden, just That's up the road. It. That's all you need. Okay. Take that and just give it a good shape. Yeah. Well, I give it a good shape. Ooh, good workout. <laughs> now, are you ready for some, some yeah. ice? Yeah, let's add a little ice in those glasses. Perfect. Okay, the same These way. are fun ice cubes. You could do crushed ice, you could do bigger ice. Look at that. Oh, I love the color. Isn't that pretty? So you're going about halfway. All right. Depending on how strong you like your drink. Yeah, well, we'll just see. <laughs> and then we're going to top it off with a little bit of club soda. Give it a little fizz. Mm-hmm. Nice. Now, you yeah. always need to stir your drink. And uh, you could use a regular stirrer, or right. you can use my favorite stirrer, uh -huh. bacon. I was going to use the knife, but. I know. This is kind of so a good thing. there's where the fun, bacon comes in. It's fun little Georgia, whimsy. That is out of control. I know. And you, I love it. you want to get your bacon nice and crispy. <laughs> Just get a nice stir. You want it really crispy going in there because oh, yeah. it's going to get soggy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you have that fun kind of earthy, oh my gosh. meaty, spicy. This is going to get their attention. Oh, yeah. I bet they probably haven't had anything like this mm, before. I have to try it. Thanks mm, for having me. Cheers. To creative drinks. Mm -hmm. That is so great. Spicy, tangy. I'm saying it's all over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you get to eat the bacon. <laughs> I love it. Really good. <laughs> Thank you. What you got there, Alan? Now, this is mango sauce, so you want to try some? Mm, yeah. It's really easy to make.
I just love this stuff. I gotta try one too. Mm, so good. You like it? Mm -hmm. Well, this is so good. Well, with chips like this, but you could also use farm raised pork, like a pork tenderloin mm -hmm. on the grill, and serve this on it. Oh my gosh, That'd it's so be good. Delicious. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. You got some more? Mm -hmm. mm. Did you just double dip that chip? <laughs> I plead the fifth. So we're making flower studded ice cubes. And for me, it's about having a little bit of whimsy in a party or in a cocktail. Food for me is not just about taste or even smell. It's about color on your plate. It's about texture. It's about sort of igniting the imagination. Distilled water is ideal because it'll give you a really clear ice cube. And that really allows you to see the flowers and the herbs so much more easily. But just use what you've got. You can actually boil some water if you want, and that'll make it a little bit more clear when you use it. Um, but it's that simple. Get some really nice ice cube trays if you can. I love to buy these king size ones that are perfect cubes. They're sometimes in silicone mats. And you just put the water in there, put your flowers in there, put your raspberry, your fruit, um, and then you just freeze them and you wait. And just do a bunch at a time. So you just have them so you can throw them out at a moment's notice when you have a guest come over or you have an impromptu party. You have these wonderful, whimsical ice cubes to make your meal and your drinks so much more exciting and interesting. So what you do with these ice cubes is that you're really adding a piece of your garden or of your environment to your cocktail. Um, and mixology has become a big thing these days. I mean, it's sort of become an art form and the ice that you put in your drinks has also become an art form. The idea being that the different sized ice cubes melt at a different rate, affecting the flavor of the drink and the experience overall. So. These are things that I would say, I, you know, I, I would like to think my grandmother would do something like this, you know, in her fancy garden parties, where she would add flowers or herbs or even fruit to the ice, freeze it, and as the ice melts, it really becomes a part of your drink, not only in color, but in flavor and in texture. Well, it's all come together, Georgia, in a beautiful Look way. Look at this. Look at that spread. Uh, I'm really impressed with what you did with the challenge. <laughs> well, I have to say, you did a pretty great job on those mason jars, too. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Mm. It's, I really appreciate you coming up and seeing us. It's magical here. Thank you for having me. It's been great. Well, sadly, that's all the time we have for Garden Home. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith. Georgia, jump into some of this salsa. I will. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. In the morning, every morning. But I don't know about the jalapenos. Julia, I can't wait to show you how we do it. <laughs> in Texas. I, I need to stand on phone books or something so I'm lumbering <laughs> over you. You have a chicken flinging sure. across the <laughs> room onto the floor. Let me help you with the lemons. Oh, I've cut the chickens out of my finger. <laughs> Julia, you're squirting blood oh, everywhere. I would like a little hemoglobin to give it a punch. <laughs> It adds life to a bloody man. It adds a little earthy flavor. <laughs>